We are on the ABC 7 Alert Center right now. NMSU just announced minutes ago that they are going to be hosting in-person graduation ceremonies happening this spring. Here's the info. The ceremony for graduate students is going to take place Friday, May 14th. The ceremony for undergrads will take place May 15th. Each student is going to get two tickets, so two guests will be allowed. Masks are going to be required for the graduates, the volunteers, and all guests. And there will also be a virtual ceremony that will be available for those unable or unwilling to attend. Now, university officials say NMSU is also planning a special event that's going to happen later this year for the 2020 graduates that didn't get a chance to walk as well. Yeah. Nicole, thank you very much. Let's now turn to our coverage of the coronavirus. There are new tools this afternoon that will help you sign up to get a vaccine. Let's take a look. First, you're at KVIA.com. We're on our home page. Let's scroll down. What you're going to be looking for here is right here, our coronavirus resource tab. You click on this. This will bring you, first off, news right now. You can sign up at CVS for an appointment. They are first come, first serve, so you may have some difficulty finding those. You can also sign up right here with the state of Texas. This is a new website that the state has just launched. They're going to allow people to sign up right now. What you do, you scroll down, and what you're looking for is this blue right here. You click on this. That's going to take you to Texas Health and Human Services, and you can get started to register. Now, nothing in El Paso is set with this. They're not yet included, but we do expect more resources to be open. Health and regional offices will hold some vaccine clinics, and we're still working to get more information on exactly when this would come up. But my best advice right now, sign up at as many can and go to our website. We're going to keep updating that page once we know when new vaccines are available. Madeline, Madeline and we also are discussing the humanitarian crisis here at the border. Migrants expected to arrive sometime today at Fort Bliss. Now that's according to Congressman Tony Gonzalez, who was briefed by the matter on the matter rather by Fort Bliss officials. Here's our first look at where the shelter for unaccompanied children will be. It's located on Fort Bliss. Once completed, the shelter is expected to provide beds for 5,000 minors. Gonzalez, who is a Republican, has been touring facilities alongside Democratic lawmakers. He's now calling on both parties to come together to form a plan to help end the humanitarian crisis. I'm just looking for a solution, right? Less finger pointing and more, hey, let's come together and let's find a solution to this that both has a strong border security package and also a reformed immigration package that makes sense. And Gonzalez adds fixing the immigration issue will be a multifaceted approach. One of those will be to help countries where migrants come from. But again, he adds it is it has rather to be a bipartisan effort for any immigration reform to be successful. The center opened its doors for hundreds of teenage female migrants who are now seeking asylum. Local leaders volunteered to have the facility serve as the first woman's emergency shelter. They say this will ease the overcrowded conditions in other areas. The center's maximum capacity is 1,450 people. Clothing, shoes, and other supplies were recently purchased by a social services organization. The focus is now getting these girls connected to family and sponsors in the U.S. Officials say they expect each teen to stay in the shelter for about a month. Health and Human Services says that as of Monday night, 69 out of more than f uh, 69 out of the more than 700 girls in the shelter had tested positive for COVID-19. Wind's going to be an issue, certainly, Madeline. That's why we're under that ABC 7 first alert. Now, I don't see Nicole. There she is. I knew it. I, I, I thought she went outside. <laughs> I didn't, I'm surprised you got the coat on, Nicole. You know what? I was going to say I need to take this off. <laughs> <laughs> it is toasty. And police have not said if an arrest has been made in connection to a shooting that happened in Socorro. Here's what we know so far. It happened around 2 p.m. on Datsun Road. That's about three miles north of San Eli. Police say one person was shot and taken to the hospital in serious condition. The victim was not identified. Police also have not said if they know what led up to that shooting or if they have anyone in custody. Of course, still developing story here. We will update you on air and online at KVIA.com when any new information comes in. President also preparing now for his next big push, its infrastructure. Tomorrow, President Biden will travel to Pittsburgh where he announced his presidential campaign. This to lay out his ambitious infrastructure plan to rebuild the nation's roads, bridges, water systems, and technology aids. Say his technology aids say Biden's far-reaching plan will include $3 trillion in new spending. 
Biden will address how he plans to pay for it, and that could lead to the next battle with lawmakers, given Biden's agenda is expected to be offset by a wide range of tax hikes on corporations and wealthy Americans. New York police are now looking for a man who viciously ass assaulted an older Asian woman. We want to warn you here. This video could the, of the attack could shock you. It might disturb some viewers. Here it is. Police are calling this assault a hate crime. There it is in the left-hand corner of your screen. It happened in Midtown Manhattan Monday. In the surveillance video, you see that man walk up to the woman. He kicks her. He then kicks her while on the ground several times, kicking her in the face. And according to the police, the attacker also made anti-Asian comments to the victim as the attack happened. You can see there she was laying on the ground. She was taken to the hospital in stable condition. That video appears to be taken from inside a nearby apartment complex. It showed those onlookers hardly reacting at all during the assault. The Brodsky organization, which owns the complex, said in a statement, the staff who witnessed the attack have been suspended pending an investigation. Shocking video. Well, welcome back in to ABC 7 at noon Tuesday and our friends from the Humane Society stopping by. Kimberly Lambert here. Kim, you're holding a big feline friend there. That's Boomer, I believe. And then Mitzi was running around earlier. <laughs> oh, there she is. Yes. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so I've got Boomer and Mitzi here. Boomer is an 11-year-old kitty. Oh. He is a senior. And Mitzi here is 10 years old. Uh, they actually came from the same household. And while it's not a requirement that they go home together, we would like to see them hang out together if it's possible. But both of these guys are super sweet, super affectionate. Uh, Boomer loves his treats, and Mitzi is a talker when she gets hungry. Oh, boy. Uh, but they're very affectionate, very sweet. They, really, they, they look like just very chill cats, Kim. It, that's something that you certainly see. Uh, the older cats tend, I think, stay calmer. Are they okay around other pets? I think these guys would be great. They, like I said, they live with each other, and we have had, um, they, they have lived with a, a dog before. I think okay. Boomer was a little bit more chill about it, but they, they do well. <laughs> Oh, that's great, Kim. And so we have the senior cats in, but it's also that time of the year where we start looking for the litters to start showing up, those kittens to come in. And you're talking about the kitten shower, a little bit different this year. Yes. Yeah, so uh, you guys have heard us talk about, you know, kittens and kitten season uh, many, many a year. And uh, recently we started doing our kitten showers, which used to be an in-person event. Right. But given everything that's happening, we're doing a virtual one this year. And so uh, on our Facebook and Instagram pages between April 5th and 11th, you can check out to see all kinds of cool information about kittens, TNR, uh, cat care, bottle feeding. Um, we're gonna be asking for donations, uh, fosters especially. Um, so a lot of really good information per pertaining to cats and kittens this year. And it does seem, Kim, that just because it's not in person, that you might be able to do a little bit more here. You get the virtual element involved. I know that it's different, but this could help maybe get more people involved. Absolutely. I know um, different uh, local uh, TNR uh, uh, organizations are always looking for volunteers. We're looking for fosters who can take in uh, mama cats or baby kittens that need to be bottle fed. So there's a lot of opportunity uh, to support your community and support your animals around here. That is a great cause, Kim. Of course, thank you both for coming in. I hope they mm -hmm. both find a home. Thanks for stopping by, Kim. Thank you. My pleasure. You got it. And remember, you can find all that information up there starting April 5th. Just head over to hslpaso.org. And, of course, we have more news for you. Stick around. Now in a few days. This applies to both of us, man. And we both drive Volkswagens, so now Volkswagens. Yeah, I like wow. that. I mean, it's kind of fun. But, you know, you never can believe anything this That's week. Exactly. Who Keep knows what we're going to say here on the news in a couple up. days. <laughs> Especially <laughs> tomorrow and Thursday. All right, let's check. Final check in with Cole. It's coming up after the break. This is great. I know. But it's going to be windy, too. You know how right. that works. Yeah. yeah. Well, I got to say, today was so my first day cooler. without the snow boots. Yeah. <laughs> Things are getting better. Yeah. It's getting better. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow.